Welcome back to TYT Sports. Uh, another fantastic article from CBS Sports. So nod to their NBA writers. Uh, the Raptors are quietly, somehow, because of all the other dominant headlines in the NBA, not just the best offensive rating in the NBA right now, but the best offensive rating in NBA history. So here's the, ch uh, uh, right? Yeah, what? Right? we hear from Ekin around the studio, right? from Edwin. So here's, first of all, here's the, the, the team rating chart to just show you, while the Warriors are blowing teams out of the water, the Raptors have a better offensive rating, which is your points per 100 possessions. Uh, and by the way, non-surprising teams that have great offensive ratings tend to be in pretty good standings in both conferences. The Raptors, Warriors, Rockets, Cavs, Clippers, Blazers, Spurs, Jazz, those top eight at least are in good uh, in terms of their win to loss. Right? The Timberwolves are the shocking one. Uh, not necessarily because they have a Carl Anthony Towns and an Andrew Wiggins there. It's their defensive rating that's so bad and why they only have seven wins on the season. Uh, when Tom Thibodeau is their coach and he's a defensive special minor league coach, I'm going to get way off tangent. To the Raptors! 18-7, mm -hmm. and seven, they are creeping up the Eastern Conference standings to the point of being necessarily tied. As James Herbert put it, there are five reasons as to why. Number one, free throws. The Raptors make a league-best 81.8% .8 of their free throws. What do I always say during NCAA March Make Madness? your free throws! Make your free throws. Turnovers. Toronto has a turnover rate of 12.4%, which is third in the league. Long-range accuracy. They're not the best, but they're shooting above 40% from three. Transition. They are first in points off turnovers. And usage distribution. They are relying, as we have always said this, the Raptors live and die by their backcourt. And guess what? The more and more that... Uh, DeRozan and Lowry have played together. The more and more they are like the best buddies in the world, the two best friends that anybody can have, and they're thriving off of each other. The Raptors tend to do this during the regular season, but two years ago, they looked like a threat in the playoffs, got knocked out. Last year, mm -hmm. two games they took at home from the Cavs, lost the series in six games, but still surprised a lot. And now, is this the team that could pull off a, a, a shocking upset? Uh, I, I don't want to go out there and say that early. at the moment. But I, I'm on the other side of like... Well, I'm sorry, it, let me rephrase one thing. Because I was going to say, we always talk about how who can ch test the Cavs. Yeah. This is a, that's, a, that's a great way to put it. Is that just because they're playing very well, it doesn't mean we need to come out and say, oh, but they're going to lose in the playoffs because we don't know that. So therefore, they deserve all the media coverage we're giving them, especially seeing how well they've been doing it, right? So yes. let's listen to a couple of things that you should take it in consideration, right? Their offensive rating of 115.3 points per 100 possessions, nearly two points ahead of Golden State Warriors at the moment, is three more than the Warriors managed in their 73 win, win season. season a year ago. And we were all talking about the Golden State Warriors from start to finish. Yes, they came under a ridiculous amount of scrutiny mm -hmm. once they fell at the last hurdle. But that didn't stop us talking about how amazing they were from start to finish. So why is Toronto not getting any airtime or any coverage here? Because not nearly enough are we talking about the Toronto Raptors. Yes. There's another point that I wanted to bring up on why we should be. Their game, right, so they're going to they come up against uh, the Atlanta Hawks on Friday, right? Yep. Uh, they're looking for their fifth straight win and 11th and 12 games <laughs> against the Atlanta Hawks. But Jason, here's some other things. Uh, the stadium which they play in will be sold out for the 106th straight game. Oh, they love the Raptors in Toronto. Oh, we know that. Their but, comment section the makes us is, know that. But it is, like, it, that is astounding. I watched... The Clippers the other night play against the Trailblazers. Empty. empty. It was nearly empty. And I don't care what you're going to tell me about. It's an oversaturated market and it's Los Angeles. The no, fine you have wagon Chris fans. Paul and Damian Lillard on the same there court at the no same excuse. time. There is no I will heap so much criticism on anyone who thinks just because their team is good that it doesn't mean they turn up to the smaller games. Fucking pack the stadium if you can get there. Do you Toronto know don't care. Do you know who's turned? <laughs> the Raptors. They're turned. <laughs> you know who's lit? It's the Raptors. They're up. And Drake was right all along. Is that the sixth is where we should be? Ah. Ha. Uh -huh. So, by the way, uh, yeah, they have a get home game against the Hawks. Uh, and then they have a pretty easy schedule, but that comes with a costly road trip and a game that my mind is on at the Golden State Warriors on December 28th. Ah, I can't wait. So, here's the thing. DeMar DeRozan was entering Michael Jordan. I did the clip entitled, DeMar DeRozan's entering Michael Jordan. You can't say that! You can't say that. You don't well, say that. I'm pretty sure even during his cool streak, DeMar DeRozan's statistics, which I will pull up for you, on the season are still remarkable. He's still averaging 28 points per game. He's shooting 48% from the field. A guy who 
almost everybody said was not going to be worth the money, including myself, has been nothing short of worth more money <laughs> for him. And the camaraderie, the camaraderie between Lowry and DeMar DeRozan is remarkable. Uh, I do think, too, that DeMar Carroll, who I, I thought was also paid too much at the time, his defensive capabilities are so integral to the future. Now, because this, as the CBS article pointed out, it's actually not the first time they've led the league in offensive rating. The 0-9-10 Bosch year with Idu Turgulu. Ah, I remember that team. A fan of TYT, actually. Uh, he, right before Bosch went to the Heat, they led the league in offensive rating and were the worst in defensive rating. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, defensively, they're, not, they're getting better, too. So, that backcourt's dangerous. And, once again, while some contrarians like myself, just to go against the grain, picked the Spurs to be the number one seed in the West, and I think I picked the Raptors to be the number one seed in the East, was just because... I want to just have that as written down because it's too easy to pick the Warriors and the Cavs. Yeah. And uh, it would be interesting, though, if the – I think what's crazy is we could get the – it's likely we get the same Eastern Conference Finals with Cavs and Raptors, and uh, it's probably not likely that we got a Thunder Warriors Western Conference Finals, but could you imagine? Oh, my God. You know who's mad about who, – Russell Westbrook's mad that we're all talking about triple doubles. Yeah, I can imagine. Stop making history then. <laughs> stop getting triple doubles, and we'll stop talking about you getting like, making triple doubles. But there's uh, there's so much media coverage around uh, those basketball things. and it, those things that people just fail to realize like how dominant they're being at the moment. And yes, at the end of the season, if they've come up short, then we can say ah, it was all for nothing. But we can't see into the future at the moment. All we can do is just weigh up how no. good they've been at the moment. And Dwayne Casey even came out and says you can't control how little the media is focusing on Cal Lowry because when they focus on DeMar DeRozan, it almost takes away from Cal Lowry. And as they mentioned here on this great article in uh, SB Nation is that Kinky. he is the only player in the NBA averaging at least 21 points, seven rebounds, and one and a half steals while shooting at least 44% uh, percent from the field. From deep. From deep, sorry, my bad, Jesus. Yeah. Um, but these are things that even if they focus on them, it still takes away from something else that the Raptors is doing very is it, well. Is it a blessing in disguise, though? I think Sometimes some, some teams want to fly under the radar. Yeah, I think, that's, so. I think that's... Uh, it's like what the Jazz are doing. Um, it's probably not a bad thing to not have to worry about the onslaught of cameras and reporting. And uh, Toronto's rallying around it. Yep. That's a yeah. hockey town. I the whole I country's a hockey ta uh, 100, town. 106 straight sellouts. That's remarkable. There was a point where they weren't that good to be selling out. That's crazy, eh? Hey. Is that what Canadians say? Oh, wow. How do Canadians say it? Do they say, eh? Eh. It's not a, que eh. it's not a question. That's what I've been told. What do you mean, eh? So it's, it's, not, it's not posing a question. It's posed as a statement that kind of becomes one. So, dog looks comfortable, eh? Dog looks comfortable, That's eh? your cue to go to the Luna shot. Dog looks comfortable. Just look at hey. it. Hey! Look, our, our director is, is dogging it. Everyone's okay. fell asleep. Tish. Everyone's fell asleep. There it is. All right. Boom. Take us home, Lou. Lou, what do you think about the Raptors? 107 straight sellouts? Sleep if that's going to be the correct thing that happens. Boom. <laughs> no, still out. Oof. <laughs> Comment below.